Long before the initial release of the Zelda timeline in the 2011 book Hyrule Historia, fans have speculated the order in which all of the Zelda games take place. While Hyrule Historia did surprise many timeline theorists with the existence of the Downfall timeline, a sort of what-if scenario where Link is defeated by Ganondorf at the end of Ocarina of Time, one other aspect of the timeline affirmed what many theorists had already speculated, that A Link to the Past, Oracle of Ages and Seasons, and Link's Awakening all featured the same hero Link, with his adventure playing out in this particular order. Across 19 Zelda games, the protagonist is always a boy named Link, in most cases, each game is featuring an entirely new character who happens to share the same name and likeness. As most of the time, the stories of these games are taking place hundreds of years apart. Before this nod from Nintendo via Hyrule Historia's timeline, we had only known a particular Link to be featured in no more than two games. For example, the Link from Ocarina of Time is the same Link who continues his adventure in Majora's Mask. But now the hero which started in A Link to the Past was believed to have taken part in four full-fledged adventures. That is, until 2017 when a new book was released in which this was changed. The Zelda Encyclopedia featured a new version of the timeline, adding games that had been released since the previous book, but also a major alteration. Not only did they swap the placement of the Oracle games and Link's Awakening, but they also claimed Oracle Link was an entirely new Link. Many fans were not happy about this change and stuck by the original timeline placement. But which placement really does make the most sense? Let's dig in and find out. Hello everyone, this is Ryan from Game Essays. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more Zelda content. Before we get started, I do want to leave a quick warning that if you are not already familiar with the Zelda timeline, you might find yourself a little lost watching this video. I'd recommend catching up on the timeline by watching or reading a summary if you're not up to speed. First, let's take a look at the supporting evidence for Hyrule Historia's interpretation that the Oracle games take place directly after A Link to the Past. The state of Hyrule appears to be in a similar state following the conclusion of A Link to the Past. Ganon is dead, as we later see in the Oracle storyline that they are attempting to resurrect him, and the Triforce seems to be residing in Hyrule Castle as it looked to be at the end of A Link to the Past. The next piece of evidence is that the Triforce recognizes Link as a hero. This coincides with the conclusion of A Link to the Past, where the Triforce recognizes Link as its master. Another often cited piece of evidence supporting Hyrule Historia's theory is in the Link's Awakening manual, stating, Ever vigilant, you decide to journey away from Hyrule on a quest for enlightenment, in search of wisdom that would make you better able to withstand the next threat to your homeland. Many have interpreted this as foreshadowing for the eventual journey of Link in the Oracle games. Finally, the most cited example is that in the conclusion of the Linked ending by completing both Seasons and Ages, Link is seen departing on a boat that looks very similar to the one in Link's Awakening. This created a really satisfying connection having Link's Awakening pick up right where the Oracle games leave off. Before we get into the supporting evidence for the Zelda Encyclopedia interpretation, I want to clear up a mistranslation. As stated, the Oracle games in the Zelda Encyclopedia take place after Link's Awakening. But here in the Encyclopedia, on the English edition, it states that the hero is the same as A Link to the Past. This is actually a mistranslation, and the Japanese version states that it is not the same hero. This is also made abundantly clear in the rest of the English edition where the text clearly is implying that it is a different hero. The strongest and most often mentioned reason for why the Oracle games take place after Link's Awakening and with an entirely new Link is due to Zelda not recognizing Link during your connected playthrough. A connected playthrough being after you complete one of ages or seasons using a password to continue your adventure in the opposite game. Link and Zelda clearly know each other through their adventure in A Link to the Past. So if it was the same Link who was following into the Oracle games, then why would Zelda be introducing herself as if she didn't know him? Many have tried to refute the dialogue when Zelda meets Link, claiming it to be a mistranslation, but thanks to Zelda Dungeon's Dark Itari, who was able to translate the Japanese version, 
we know that the English text is quite accurate, so it really does seem as though Zelda does not recognize Link in any way. Next, there is some lesser cited evidence in defense of Zelda Encyclopedia. That is with the character Impa. Impa, again like Zelda, introduces herself to Link and appears to be meeting him for the first time. In Oracle of Seasons at the start, Impa mentions that Zelda sends her on a quest to protect the Oracle of Seasons, further solidifying that Zelda didn't know Link, as it seems she would have clearly sent Link on this adventure given their trials together in A Link to the Past, but she doesn't do so. If this was supposed to be the same Link from A Link to the Past, I'm assuming Impa would also know Link, being that she is generally a character close to Zelda. Impa actually doesn't make an appearance in A Link to the Past, but that doesn't necessarily mean she doesn't exist during that time. But, consequently, we could also look at Impa's absence during A Link to the Past and her presence in the Oracle games as a point in favor of this being a different time period. So which evidence creates a stronger case for the Oracle game's timeline placement? Let's go back to Hyrule Historia's version and see what holes we can poke in the argument for the Oracle games taking place after A Link to the Past and featuring the same Link. First, the case of the Triforce recognizing Link as a hero. If we look specifically at the text, it isn't necessarily saying Link is the master of the Triforce, it just calls him a hero. Throughout the Zelda games, we have had a number of chosen heroes who at that point in time had not yet accomplished anything yet. We can look to Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword in this case. Being called a hero in the world of The Legend of Zelda doesn't really require any other prerequisite other than destiny. Jumping back to the manual for Link's Awakening mentioning a journey after A Link to the Past, I don't think this one holds up too well under scrutiny. First, we have to think of the context given when the game was developed. Link's Awakening was originally released in 1993. This was eight years before the Oracle games. It's assuming a lot that not only did they want to allude to a game nine years out, but also intending it to be a middle portion of a supposed trilogy. Instead of the more logical explanation, the Link's Awakening is a direct sequel to A Link to the Past. Also, on the other side of the coin, I find it hard to believe that Nintendo and Capcom decided to create this game with the mindset of inserting it in between A Link to the Past and Link's Awakening when Link's Awakening was clearly built as a direct sequel. Also, there's no mention of Ganon's resurrection on this journey as the manual clearly is referring to him being defeated in the events of A Link to the Past. Lastly, the manual's wording would lead me to believe that this journey that Link goes on was much of his own choosing, when in the Oracle games, Link is called by the Triforce seemingly out of nowhere and sent to these lands. Now, in the case of the boat, well, it does look surprisingly like the same boat in Link's Awakening, it could simply just be a different boat. I think this is just one of those cases where people just really want this to be the same Link on the same boat, but there really is no way to prove it one way or the other we have to look to more concrete evidence to help draw a conclusion. As for the evidence against Zelda Encyclopedia's interpretation, that the Oracle games take place after Link's Awakening with a new hero, one could argue that the dialogue for Impa and Zelda was more for exposition as a way to introduce the audience to these characters, and not that Zelda doesn't actually know who Link is. I have seen some people go as far to say is that Zelda's dialogue is just simply not canon. So after looking at the evidence for both of these arguments, which case makes the most sense? I honestly have to say that I strongly side with Zelda Encyclopedia on this one. While these books are not the end-all be-all for Zelda lore, they were overseen by Nintendo and this appears to be their latest interpretation. This is also the timeline that appears on Zelda.com if you needed any more evidence that Nintendo is endorsing this. Let me be clear though, I'm not just siding with Nintendo to side with Nintendo. I feel that the in-game evidence is the strongest case for any timeline placement, and to me, Zelda and Impa being unfamiliar with Link tells me that this is an entirely new Link and Zelda on this journey. So I stand with Nintendo's latest interpretation of the placement of these games. The Oracle games take place after Link's Awakening with a new hero. I'd like to give a special thanks to ZeldaDungeon.net's community members Charles Xavier and Dark Atari for their fantastic piece on the Oracle's placement 
A lot of this information helped me put together this video. Make sure to let me know your opinion on the Oracle Games timeline placement and I look forward to the discussion in the comments. Thank you and take care.